because their visa status might be jeopardized. Even such things as you know, ordinary visas are used as leverage against independent experts. Repression is in the details. It isn't in just a feeling of being a little nervous on a street. Repression is in the details. It's the arbitrariness of which your visa might be denied. It's that kind of thing. But Vladimir Putin sees no repression. Перед законом должны быть равны все. И скромный клерк, и госчиновник даже самого высокого ранга, крупный бизнесмен. Вне зависимости от того, сколько миллиардов долларов числится на его личных или корпоративных счетах. Until now, the American executives running UCOS have been safe for fear of offending Putin's buddy, George Bush. Okay. But now they're hiding out in London we'll and not no going back. The Russian prosecutor would like to ask them a few questions. I have done nothing improper, so I have nothing to be concerned about, except if they were to try to fabricate something that simply doesn't exist, and that's been a part of the problem here is that they are they're fabricating things, uh, reinterpreting law uh, retroactively, uh, making up law retroactively, uh, and uh, that's of concern because uh, if that occurs in Russia, there is absolutely no way to protect yourself. There is no independent judiciary, uh, and so you can't protect yourself. I'm not going to take that risk. During these high levels of intensity, we, we, we have a number of raids in the office. Uh, we have... Uh, you know, several times in a week, uh, a number of people, 10, 20, 30, 40 people showing up at our office to go through different offices. They take hard drives, uh, they take documentation, paperwork, uh, you know, they break doors down um, to get into offices, uh, they take safes, uh, they increase the number of people they're inviting down for questioning and so forth. If Texas oil men are fair game, who's going to care about some parentless children? Khodorkovsky founded and funds a school for orphans. His parents run it. The Spetsnaz, Russia's SAS, just raided it. Вот, искали, не знаю, что они искали, ну, потому что в наших документах только, сами понимаете, что есть детские продукты, детское меню, детская одежда, учебники, ну, то, что полагается для детского учреждения. Дети, конечно, испугались. Те дети, которые из тех точек, которые знали, что такое оружие и что оно стреляет, испугались. Ночью вызывали врачей психологической разгрузки. In the past two months, Putin has landed some major body blows. Yukos tax bills have risen from seven to 21 billion dollars. The company's executives and its lawyers are in hiding abroad. Its owner is in jail and staying there. His detention has just been extended to February 2005. But the government hasn't yet got the oil. Yukos is still owned by Mikhail Khodorkovsky. The government announces that it's going to seize half the company and sell it to the highest bidder to pay for the very taxes it has levied. Well, first of all, it's illegal for them to sell. And the reason it's illegal is that according to Russian tax law, they are not supposed to dispose of, non of, core, of our core assets if there's other means of settling these liabilities, which there are, and we've made, a, we've made them aware of all those. Um, but they've chosen to ignore that, and they're proceeding with basically uh, disposing of the heart of the company. Ну, я ему задала этот вопрос, а он мне сказал, ничего подобного. Все, что я построил, все, что я создала, будет работать. Ну, может быть, менее эффективно, если не по 
вот, так сказать, хороший менеджер. Но, тем не менее, оно будет работать. Те заводы, те предприятия, те дома, в которых живут люди. Ну, вот и прочее, то, что я, говорит, создала, оно уже останется людям. Потому что он очень спокойно отнесся. Мне ничего не жалко. Пускай только его отпустит. Понимаете, денег, ну, в конце концов, ну, не было, ну, не будет, ну, и не надо. Я умею. Правда, у меня на старости, ну, ну, что делать? Ну, я более суровая. А я буду я более что? суровая. There's no protest from Western governments who insist the auction, like the trial, remains a Russian affair. So, Yukos dispatches some heavyweight American lawyers to observe the sale. And Yukos will be potentially going to be the first company that anybody knows of that will be broken up trying to pay its taxes. Two of the plan bidders for the asset appear to be front companies. We don't know who's behind them. The irony is, one of the charges leveled against Mr. Kordakovsky was supposedly bidding through front companies. If it was a crime for them, what is happening today? We want to go to the auction. It's simple. If the Russian government has nothing to hide, reason says they should let us in. This is a public auction. The state property fund serves as a temporary sale. Let's give it our best shot. Why would they want to keep us out? <laughs> They check the name of the company, Minotap, they can find it on the list, and they check each individual name, and they couldn't find it on the list. They told us that they would uh, check it out after they were with the rest of the crowd again, and, uh, you know, we hope we could get in. Inside the building, the world's press is in attendance. But instead of the three bidders expected for Russia's biggest oil company, only two show up. A mystery finance company called Baikon and government oil giant Gazprom. First, the bidders hand over their passport documents to prove their bona fides. Then they're invited to table their bid. Номер один предлагает начальную минимальную цену, и я принимаю эту цену. Благодарю вас. Спасибо. Outside, still no luck for the Yukos lawyers. An unexpected pause. The Gazprom man says that far from turning up to bid, he actually still needs head office to give him permission to go ahead. Apparently, authorization is not forthcoming. Gazprom withdraws, leaving only the mysterious Baikal to buy Yukos at a knockdown price of $9 billion, a quarter of its real value. It turns out that Baikal's registered office is a vodka bar in the middle of Siberia. На мой взгляд и по моему это ощущение возникло у всех, что вот в этой машине, машине отъема собственности произошел какой-то сбой. The oil and gas industry is undoubtedly the most important industry in Russia. And they have sold what I believe is their most important oil field to a company that is two days old, uh, that does not have an office, 
and uh, unquestionably does not have the technical capability or the know-how to uh, take over the responsibility of developing this asset. Has the registered address of vodka bar? Yeah, there's uh, I think there's. I, th I think the building has some recreational activities <laughs> of some sort. I, 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 it's not funny. I mean, it, it, it is funny, but it's not funny. Uh, I, I'm just astounded. I'm in total disbelief that anyone who has been associated with this process and set it up in Russia thinks that the world is watching this and buying it. And I'm even more concerned if they know the world is watching it and not buying it, and they don't care. Three days later, the Russian government announced that the mysterious Baikal will, after all, sell Yukos to the government. Khodorkovsky is left with a refinery and a handful of service stations. Game over. As I said to somebody at dinner last night, you know, we have to eat more reasonably now. We have a much smaller company paying us now. That, uh, and in fact, uh, as you know, it wasn't even our client, but it humbles you after the auction. You recognize that the stock value, when we first met Khodorkovsky, the stock value was $16. And now it's, uh, I think, under a dime. It's pretty frightening what the state can do. Their default is to behave like gangsters. It's a dirty, corrupt system. Make the most of it while you can. Any amount of damage that's collateral is okay as long as you take care of yourself. It's an incredible willingness on the part of the state to allow people to look after number one. Borakovsky has lost his oil, but not yet his court case. The defense now hit on a last-ditch tactic. The very gravity of Khodorkovsky's situation can be turned to his advantage. The loss of Yukos, the terms of his imprisonment, can all be used to create the image of a political martyr. From his jail cell, the billionaire starts the campaign, issuing a public proclamation renouncing his wealth. Уничтожение Юкоса сыграло злую шутку не только с пенсионерами, но и с Генеральной прокуратурой. Считаю, что сегодняшние проблемы Генеральной прокуратуры обязательно будут преодолены после установления в стране реального независимого суда. Это будет больно, но выиграют все, и судьи, и прокуратура, и общество, поскольку я надеюсь, что для всех людей главное все-таки не звездочки, а чувство собственного достоинства. The defense want to turn the trial into a litmus test for democracy in Russia. They want to transform the man once regarded as a profiteer and a gangster into Nelson Mandela. Bob's beseeching Western political charities, but they're proving reluctant to back the campaign. There's a tremendous amount of resistance uh, in certain organizations, for instance, Amnesty, to recognize someone who has vast wealth as a political prisoner. And uh, Amnesty, for all its good work, is incredibly bureaucratic, incredibly non-transparent, incredibly undemocratic, incredibly unresponsive, and uh, incredibly politically correct. So while they have done great work on many occasions and continue to do so, cases like Khodorkovsky's, which fall outside of the cookie cutter, uh, are something that they're not equipped to deal with. And unfortunately, they lack the political courage to deal with, and that's a real disappointment. The parents are a key part of the PR campaign. Selected journalists are invited to Karalova for exclusive interviews. 
в порядке, мы уже закалились за это время. 